Welcome back to another Bash programming tutorial. In this final tutorial, I'm going to cover a few more features that I haven't talked about before. There are Bash features which I expect you'll use a little bit less than the, the core features we've covered. And we'll also do a quick review of everything that we've covered so far so that you've got sort of a deep imprint of those core Bash features. Now, why am I doing a couple smaller features or things like functions in a way where I'm not even pretending that they're important? Well, because I think if you're writing bash scripts of any complexity, that is for you know important things that you're taking user input and parsing it, and then these scripts need to be maintained, you're doing anything complex in them, bash is gonna get ugly really quick, and there's a lot of better languages to do your work in. Almost any server that you work with in your career is going to have either Python already installed or something like Perl available for you. So again, I recommend using a real programming language for something that is that needs to be production quality for a script that's more than, let's say, 50 lines. I would almost certainly switch to using a language that can you know, deal with strings in a way that's intuitive, that has different data types available. I will call out the things we haven't really covered yet, like the read function, functions in general, a little bit about exit codes, and some more stuff about loops, iteration, control flow. But for the most part, I'm just gonna be covering what we've done so far. Okay, so here we go. At the very beginning, what the script is doing is telling the kernel, I'm a bash script, run me with bin bash. This is just some documentation when this script is called, we're going to call it with some arguments. The number of required arguments that I'm specifying here, remember no space on either side of that equal sign, is two. I need at least two arguments because I'm going to use those two arguments here, the first two. Num args, I'm setting to how many arguments were actually passed in when the script was called. So this gets me the, the dollar sign value. This is the variable lookup the dollar sign, and this the variable, which is the hash, the number sign, the pound symbol. This is the number of arguments that were passed in. If you don't remember this, just watch the arguments video again. So number of arguments here, this is the ones required. This is the actual number of arguments. And here I'm using control flow if, and testing here, the old school test, if the number of arguments is less than the number of required arguments, well then we're just gonna echo out a usage string. We're using some string interpolation here to get the zero variable, which is the name of our script, the name that the script was called with. Call the script with a name and a number as arguments. And then we exit with one, exit code one is gonna be a generic error, error, exit. So this ends the script here. Let's just try running that just to see that. So we're going to call gameoflife.sh with no arguments. Bam. Not enough arguments. And here is that script name. This is the variable zero. You can see that variable zero also includes this. It's not just the name of the file itself. It's actually the entire name that I used to refer to that script. Okay. Now we're going to set some variables using our arguments. The first argument and the second argument. We're going to echo those out in a string. A for loop. This is sort of a core control flow thing. It's not really worth its own video because it's so simple. Like in any other programming language, I'm specifically referring to the Ruby playlist, which I hope you've watched because that is the intro to actual programming playlist that I did. But for each arg, I'm naming the variable here in all of my arguments. That's dollar sign at sign. So that's essentially what would in another language be an array or a list. I've quoted it here so that things are properly separated. So for each argument, do echo that argument. So this variable arg is first set to the first thing, and then we echo out the first thing, and then it's set to the second thing, we echo out the second thing. So this is iteration. We're iterating over some collection that has more than one member. In this case, it's simply the number of arguments that we passed in. So this is a for loop. It's used for iteration, going through each member of a group sequentially. 
Okay, functions. We've got two different ways of defining a function. The first is simply with function name, and the second is with the function keyword. I recommend doing this just because it's more readable. So what this function is going to do, you've got function name, parens, and then the curly brackets to delimit your function body. So space actually does take a parameter, and this is one of the reasons I just hate bash for readability. Most languages have named parameters. Uh, Python specifically has some really nice features around this, like default parameters and that sort of thing. So unfortunately, and this is terrible for readability, arguments aren't defined in the function signature here. They're simply numbered arguments. So you sort of restart the numbering with one. This one argument now isn't referring to the first argument passed in with the script, but the first argument passed into the function. I'll show you how to call a function in a second. So you've got these two function syntax, one syntax is one with the function keyword and one without. This just says whatever the first argument we get with this function is, so we're just spacing out uh, whatever is whatever string is passed in here. Okay, so this is the meat of our script here. This is the Java test function. This is designed to single out Java developers and humiliate them. So we're checking if a number is equal to 99, it's just a stupid guess the number game here, then we've got a winner showing some of the new test syntax. If we've got a low number, less than 10, then we're using the spaced function, which we defined before. So here's how you call a function. It's the function name, no parens, like in a normal programming language, and then immediately argument one through argument n. So just like echoing multiple things like echo hello two. This is argument one, this is argument two. If you are coming from something like Ruby, Python, Perl, JavaScript, or anything else mostly, you'd be used to calling things like this. I'm gonna call the echo function with parameter one and parameter two, uh, but that's not how this works. So suck it up. We've checked to see if we've got a winner. Otherwise we check to see if that number is less than 10. And if it is, we give this person a last chance to avert their doom by entering a password. If that password is not Java, then we spare our person. Again, we're calling spaced to get some formatting around the string that we pass in here. Otherwise, we are going to uh, threaten our user with death, but then uh, mercy will take over, or really pity. So this is the whole script, pretty much. So we'll try this with a couple different numbers. The important thing here is defining a function doesn't actually call it. So we define this function, and we call the spaced function from inside of the Java test function, but after we've defined it, we actually need to call Java test. If we make it to the end, that is if we don't exit early, we exit with a zero, in other words, without any errors. Okay, let's run this baby a couple times. So name, we'll say Dave, and the number, we will say 99. Let's check that win. So our first two arguments were Dave and 99. You ran it with two arguments. Here they are, Dave and 99. This jumped into the Java test function. We actually win because we guessed that number. Okay. Let us try with a third argument, named third, and we will say nine for our number. So our first two arguments, again, Dave and nine. This is counting through our arguments, iterating over them. We're threatened with death and given a chance to live. Let's try something that isn't Java. We get the exit. And we'll try the same thing again with the, the password that's likely going to get us killed here. And everything works as we expect. So we've tested all or most of the cases that can happen here. We're pretty much done. This, is, this contains more or less everything that you'll want in your basic bash scripts. There are some things that I recommend you looking into. Specifically, the quoting rules for bash, understanding those will go a long way towards making your life a little bit less hellish. And second, I really, really recommend 
understanding set. So bash quoting rules and set. Those things are, you know, if you really need to work with production bash and things are getting big and hard to maintain, look at bash quoting rules and set. I'll link to a couple good introductions to those topics, but I'm simply not gonna cover it here because we're about to get into web development and all that other stuff, all that content I've got planned. And screwing around with Bash just isn't going to get you very far when now even some of the most constrained hardware environments, for example, if you're running on like a small ARM board, you'll likely already have Perl or Python installed on that thing. A lot of these efficiency reasons for using Bash are, you know, for the purists, they're occasionally beautiful arguments, but... Almost anything complex you can do with Bash, you can do better with another language. So you do need to know the basics. You do need to be able to read Bash scripts and figure out what's going on. But that's about it. So I hope that's the feeling that this course has given you. And once you're ready to move on, if you enjoy programming, I recommend uh, taking a look at the Python course, which I'll be bringing out shortly. Otherwise, just check out the Ruby course if you have not already, because that's really where I recommend starting your programming journey. If you guys have gotten a kick out of this course, this little mini bash intro course, uh, remember to give a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already, check out the main site, tutoriallinux.com, and I'm also on Twitter and Facebook, believe it or not, and judge me as harshly as you will. That's twitter.com, tutoriallinux, and facebook.com, tutoriallinux. So I'll see you guys there.